Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to lesson three of our full stack MERN course. Today we're going to be creating some routes and controllers in our application. Since clogging our main file with this many lines uh, tends to not scale very well as the application grows, we'll also be creating a .env file and seeing how uh, that works, which is a common practice for applications in production if you weren't aware, just to hide things like database keys and everything from being on a, on a git repository because it's basically a uh, public. So the first thing that we're going to be doing for this is we're going to cd into our server. We're going to npm install .env. Alright, and after we've installed .env, we're going to just get out of the client folder. We're going to open our server folder. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this config. And inside of here, we're going to create a file called .env. And what we're going to do here is we're going to move our database connection string here into db underscore uri here and then we'll be able to reference this from our main application as process.env.db uri or whatever you would define it as but the one line we are going to need to put in is require dot env which is what we just installed dot config and chain this method to it and uh, do the path and so we did it slash config oh, slash dot env. I think this might need to be double quotes here. Let's just do that in case. Oops. There we go. Not there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. So the second thing that we're going to be doing here after we save this is we're going to be going back into our server folder again. We're going to also create a folder called controllers. And we're also going to create a folder in server called routes. So inside of our controllers folder what we're going to want to do is create a new file and we're going to call it usercontroller.js and inside of our routes folder we're going to create a file called userroutes.js so inside of user routes what we need is to make an express router so we need to destructure the router object uh, from express and then we're going to call the function so const router equals router oops and then we're going to do uh, const user controller which we still have to make we're just going to import it in the advance because dot dot controllers user controller and then uh, we'll do router dot get and we're basically in this going to be moving our methods from here into a user controller file and then reference the controller uh, methods depending on the route that the user chooses. So just to show you guys how this works, we're going to right here do router get slash. We're going to do request and response. We're going to do an arrow function here. And then inside of this, we're going to just copy and paste this method and this will uh, require us to bring in mongoose for a second until we move it into our our controller which is why uh, we don't want to write these methods in the end in our uh, in our routes because we don't want to have to bring in all these dependencies and all these other things and have all these extra lines it's just much nicer when you spread them out like that so then inside of our uh, thing right here what we want to do we're going to first comment these out we're going to do a control and a slash and it will comment it all out for you on VS Code. And we're going to get rid of this and we're, instead of that we're going to do api.use and we're going to do user routes which we have to still import. Oh, I can't tab it in <laughs> express. Alright anyway so let's do up here we're going to do const user routes equals require routes user routes. And we went over this briefly in uh, in one of my older Express videos, if you guys have seen those. Uh, if not, I'll just pop a link in the description. It was one of my like first couple of videos we went over routes in Express. But basically what we're doing now is moving the method into a specific router for dealing with the user. So let's just uh, save these two real quick and let's test this in just a sec here. So a couple of things I, I messed up here. Uh, we actually didn't even need mongoose here, we needed just user. And then we needed to also do the exports line, so I bet on that. But basically, once we have this set up, now we will be able to see node index that we get API listening MongoDB connected. So now let's navigate to this in the browser. All right, so we can see in the browser that our users come up 
And so now what we're going to basically be doing is moving these types of raw functions in our routes to individual functions in our actual controller. So if we navigate to user controller, all we're going to need const user equals require models. Oh yeah, we gotta go at one outside dot dot models user. And then we're going to need to do module.exports for each fun each function that we want to to basically have. So we're gonna do dot get all for this one, and we're gonna do equals request response. And then we're going to just paste in what we just had here into there. And then what we can do here is we can get rid of this object here, this whole thing here. And then we can just do user controller get all. And then this will do exactly the same thing. So let's test this in the browser real quick. All right, so we restart our server and refresh the page and we can see that we get exactly the same result, but we get a lot cleaner code this way and we can just write all our functions that we need inside of the controller and then call them from the routes. And then we can just delete these from here after we uh, use them. And then it'll just be like much smaller in our main file and it'll be much more clean code. So the two other functions that we're writing for now are going to be get sign up and get login and I'm naming them get because there's these are going to be get requests and we'll get into post requests the de uh, once we get a little deeper in this series but for now to keep it simple we're going to do module.exports.get sign up equals request oh I spelled sign up wrong sign up it's requ <laughs> request response and then we're going to open that up and then we're going to do if request.query and this is actually, we can copy this from our main, so let's just get this here. So sign up is just gonna be a replacement for, hang on, we gotta uncomment this for a sec to get the code without the comment, and then we can just delete this, pop this in here, and then we'll do the same thing with uh, this one. Uncomment this, cut this, and then we will be a Gucci. And then we can see our main file looks way cleaner and we can add more stuff to that without it just being like a scroll uh, a scroll hell, if you will. <laughs> so module.exports.get login equals request response. And then we'll do paste there. And then we can see we in the login we do a find and then in the create we do a create. So one of them will make a new user in the database and then the other one will find it and then uh, it will return whatever it needs to return. All right, so now what we have to do is we need to define these in our user routes. So it's pretty simple, router.get slash sign up, user controller get sign up, router get login, user controller get login and then uh, now we can test this on our after we restart our server we will uh, test this on our front end real quick one thing i just realized in our code is that in the login i had this set to user one when it, that was the thing that we <laughs> created from the query so we just go ahead and set that back to user so we'll actually get the uh, proper thing in our test all right, so once we're here in our console, we got our uh, React application up here. We go back to this, we can see a user. Let's log in with test, test two, and see what happens. Test two, and we get back the correct response, I believe. Yep, front end code looks good. Since we fixed the back end code, we're getting the right user. And that is basically all for this video. That's basically how we can structure these backend uh, routes and, and controllers to make our code look a lot cleaner and our application a lot more scalable. If you enjoy this kind of content, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.